Hello all, Lanty Duarte Girl here with my Pride and Prejudice and Zombies costume tutorial. Today I have the bodice. It's going to look a bit different by the time I'm done because this part right here is going to be gathered for the underbust. I'm thinking about adding a sash to it to help break it up. But around here I put this square-like neckline. Now there's a whole bunch of different kinds of necklines from the Regency era. I've seen the really high necklines that could be considered jewel necklines. I've seen very deep V necklines, scoop necklines, and some of those necklines were pretty darn low. So you could probably get away with a lot of different kind of necklines, a lot of creativity there, depending on what how you want to look and what you want to look like. I also went for long sleeves because where I'm at it gets really cold around Halloween. We don't get any snow, but there's mountains on either side of us, you know, cold air sinks, so we really get it there. But if you don't want long sleeves, you could also go with short puff sleeves or three-quarter sleeves. The, ne the sleeves back then also usually went down to the f woman's first knuckle, so something kind of like that, her first knuckles on her hand. And they often had little wristbands around there. I decided to leave those off for freedom of movement and ease of movement, because after a while it gets kind of annoying, honestly. <laughs> There's the front. So for the back, I'm going to have some buttons running down the center here. I'm thinking I'll probably just go with white buttons because they won't distract very much. Maybe purple if I could find them. So the sash would come around, tie back here. Some Regency patterns also have this sort of cut to them. So I'm running my fingers along it. It's kind of like a princess seam of sorts or an A-line seam for the back. Not all patterns have this. I've seen patterns without it work just as well. So if you can't find one like this or you find a pattern that doesn't have it, no one's really going to point their fingers and accuse you. If they do, well, tell them you're just going to go and feed them first to the zombies. So for making your own Regency dress for your costume or having someone make it for you, there are tons of patterns there. They have the big three, which are Simplicity, McCall's, Butterick, um, there's Laughing Moon. I'm probably forgetting tons more, I apologize for. But if you search Regency era patterns, you will find a whole bunch of them online. Some of them are physical patterns that are mailed to you, others are PDF patterns that you can download and print it as needed. There's a whole lot of options for you and you're in no way limited just by this style I'm doing here because I just happen to like it. There's also drop fronts, all sorts of different kinds of things out there. So be sure to take some time to look at some fashion plates to get an idea if you want to be historical. There are tons of fashion plates, a whole lot of images, and sometimes you can even find Victorian images of women wearing Regency era patterns. So I'm hoping this helps, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.